Hi, everybody. Oh, my God. It's so dark in here. I've got to turn on the light. But, yeah. Um, I just wanted to talk about the whole Tandy Newton situation. Um, apparently, from what I've read, she basically broke down in tears during an interview and talked about the guilt that she felt taking roles from darker skinned women and um, apparently black Twitter, which is usually um, American Twitter, basically clowned her over that. Um, you know, basically trying to, you know, make out like she was being disingenuous or, you know, she wasn't genuine, she wasn't speaking from her heart. It's a really, really complex thing to talk about. And it's not complex because the truth is not difficult. You know, it's not complex because the truth is difficult to work out. The truth is not difficult to work out. It's just that there are a lot of feelings surrounding this. So speaking the absolute truth in the in a way that won't piss people off is going to be very, very difficult to do. Now, when it comes to Tanda Newton herself, she's always strongly identified with her Zimbabwean side. Regardless of whether or not she has a white partner, she is always identified strongly with that side. She is always identified strongly with the black part of herself. Her Africanness has been a core part of her identity, quiet as it's kept. In fact, given Zimbabwe's history with the British and with white settlers in general, I can't assume that's how she's feeling, but I wouldn't be surprised if the internal conflict within her is a bit more pronounced than people, than other people who are biracial, who are, you know, black, you know, half black, half white. I wouldn't be surprised if the struggle within her was just not just that little bit more pronounced than some other biracial people because of Zimbabwe has such a strong history of fighting for its own independence from white colonialism. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of conflict within her that causes <coughs> like genuine inner turmoil and, and things like that when it comes to her racial identity. So I don't think she's faking anything when she talks about her guilt of, you know, of, um, I don't think she's faking anything when she talks about her guilt to taking roles away from dark skinned, dark skinned women. But here's the thing now, it's not Tandy Newton herself taking roles away from dark, darker skinned women. It's casting directors taking roles away from darker skinned women. It is the industry, it is the industry blocking black writers or stealing ideas from black writers that are blocking roles for darker skinned black women. It is not women like Tandy who are basically taking roles that, that interest her or that are offered to her. That's not a her problem. That is a Hollywood problem. That is an industry problem. That is, you know, that is an, you know, inherent racism within the entertainment industry. Does she benefit from it? Absolutely, she does. But it's not her fault personally. And the thing about it is when people give themselves a hard time like this, what people don't seem to get is that it can be another form of narcissism. It can be another form of being self-indulgent or being self-centered so for her to like have this guilt over dark skin women not getting the roles like you're not the one writing the roles you're not the one producing it. it they're being written and produced by other people in the industry who are gatekeeping who are making sure that women like us don't get roles okay so it's got nothing to, it's got borderline nothing to do with you the only thing you're doing is making the most of an opportunity that was presented to you and then she apparently said something else. That part I didn't catch. Now, you know, I think that Tandy Newton, I don't think it was pandering. I think she was looking for approval. But again, I don't know her. I can only say what I've seen. I think she was looking for approval. I think she genuinely does feel guilt. I think she genuinely does feel this way, but it's, you know, from what I've read, it's really, really like self-indulgent to me. 
Because it's like you're giving yourself a hard time so that somebody can come around and say, oh, no, it's not your fault. Oh, no, 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 don't feel bad. No, not like, come on, girl. Come on, you're better than this. You're better than that. You are better than that. Don't do that shit. But then apparently she, she said something else, which probably explains why black Twitter are coming for her. Um, apparently she said something along the lines of, I never noticed there was colorism until, you know, I came to America. Now, Americans took this personally to the point where I went on a, a black American's um, Facebook channel. Like this person I absolutely adore with my whole heart. Let's be absolutely clear. And she's always been really, really balanced, really, really sort of, you know, she's always had a balanced opinion. <laughs> But then there was someone else on her page saying that she couldn't stand black Britons. And this is what I'm saying, you know, with, with Tandy Newton, with what she said, like, this is how personally people took it. They took it as Tandy Newton's statement about colorism, looking down on black Americans to the point where now all black Britons are kind of tarred with the same brush. So... My thing is this, right? My thing was this. So this began a really complex argument. I could have left it alone. Could have left it alone. I chose not to. That's on me. I said, look, do tell. And then she said, um, you know, well, black people treated me badly, looked down on me because I was American. And I said, well, as a black British person, I've never seen anybody look down on black America. And this is absolutely true. I've got cousins who have been to America more than once. I haven't had a single relative of mine come back and say anything bad, like not a single thing bad about black Americans over there. In fact, they all had great things to say about black Americans. Oh, they treat you like your family, like you, they welcome you. They're, they're, they're nice to you, this, that, and that. Like I've heard, I've heard nothing from good things about black Americans from relatives um, that have been over there in the, you know, from the UK who have been to America, who've experienced American culture. You know, they welcome you, they're, like, they, they're nice to you, this, that, and that. I've never heard anything bad about black Americans. And growing up in my childhood, like uh, my whole life has been surrounded by African American music or, or black American music, because remember, we've got indigenous blacks over there as well. So we've got black American music, black American vernacular, black American TV shows, many of whom without, probably without those shows, we wouldn't have the positive, you know, some of the positive self image that we have now without those programs coming over here. And without programs like Roots, another black American show, we probably wouldn't have as much of a grasp as, as to the ways in which colonialism has affected us like, if we hadn't had shows like that come over here. In fact, the show Roots is so powerful that the last time I heard about Roots, the last time I heard about, um, well, the old version anyway, the old version, it wasn't shown here for years because it was supposed to, it was supposedly worrying that it might create unrest. That's how powerful Roots used to be and still is. That's how powerful it was. It wasn't shown here for years because the police feared it would bring civil unrest. Black American. The amount of power that black Americans have had on our culture, the, 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 the way in which they shaped our lives. So, it, you know, if this woman went over there, this black American woman went over there, I'm not saying her, her, um, her experiences are wrong, and I will get to that. Um... I, like, because I didn't experience it and because I'm literally seeing black British people have, like, almost nothing but good things to say about black Americans. Um, the only people I've really seen down, look down on black Americans are, like, you know, <coughs> African folk and maybe Caribbean folk. But I've never seen it from black British people. So... I'm thinking, given all that, given all that information from my experiences, I think where I went wrong with this person is attempting to tell her what her experience was. 
I didn't realize that's what I was doing, but I look back at that conversation with that person who was xenophobic towards black British people. And I ended up literally invalidating her experiences. I didn't mean to do that. Because the thing is, is that it's one thing for me as a black British person to experience other black British people saying nothing but good things about black American culture. That's one thing, but it's another thing to be a black American person and experience how black British people treat you. I'm not her. So how am I going to tell her what the fuck her experience is? That, that just doesn't make any sense. And I, I didn't even realize I was doing it, but that's exactly what I was doing. I was trying to tell her what her fucking experience was. Like the fuck? Listen, I don't vibe with that fucking xenophobic, racist. I don't vibe with that shit. I don't vibe with any of that shit. Okay? For me, people are people. And anybody who over identifies with their culture or their race in order to treat somebody else like they're lower than them, to me, that's a narcissistic piece of shit. And I don't need to be dealing with people like that. I don't need to be dealing with that. <clears throat> so for me, if a, there are any people who are xenophobic towards any other black people from Africa, from America, I don't have them around me. I don't like that shit. Yeah. But just because I don't like that shit, it doesn't mean that as a professional woman, she hasn't experienced what she's experienced because the circles that I run with, I'm not a professional. I'm unemployed at the moment. I'm registered disabled. So the circles that I run with as a black British person is going to be very different, different from the circles that this person walks around as a professional woman in the world. And she's been all over the world. I haven't been all over the world like that. So I can't turn around to her and say, oh, you know, your experiences are wrong or your feelings are wrong. Like if that's what she's experienced, then that's what she's experienced. But then I've experienced that black Americans tend to be a bit more xenophobic towards us than the other way around. We've had Samuel L. Jackson talking about roles being taken away from black Americans. We've had like, we, you know, there have been endless discussions like with people, with YouTubers talking about you know, how black British people don't know jack shit about, you know, the black, our experience or even the black experience, like, you know, basically downplaying our experience with racism because we don't experience it like in the, you know, because we get treated better in the US than people in, you know, people from the US actually do, you know. Chiefly because, you know, the chiefly because the U.S. police are trying not to look bad. So. Yeah. So basically. Um, what was I saying before? Yeah. So just, because, you know, the, from my experience. It's been more black Americans being xenophobic towards black British people thinking that foreign people have no right to talk about specific issues and no right to comment and this that and third like it's literally been me experiencing more bigotry towards black british people than the other way around so there's validity in my experiences but there's also validity in that woman's experiences and that's where we have to kind of try to you know you know she tried to agree to disagree which to me is bullshit because the thing is is like xenophobia is not something that you agree to disagree about it's not something that you agree to disagree about it's something that you have a mature conversation about you don't judge people as a whole by the way that you have been treated you judge you know you, uh, for me I don't judge people by their race or but I know it sounds weird coming from me because I've talked a lot about race in the past and I used to be the type of person who oscillated between being very pro pro black and very pro-integration but the way that I am now knowing the truth about how race works and things like that um, I'm honest about the way race works but when it comes to individuals I'm going to treat you how you treat me and I'm going to judge you by how you treat me and how you treat the people around you that is not race specific and that is not culture specific but this woman basically tried to, um, you know, basically was talking about her experiences, but where she fucked up was saying that all black, black British people are like that, 
when that's not the case. I could have easily made the same mistake and said that black Americans are, you know, are more xenophobic than us. Instead, I just said, well, you guys are xenophobic too, because that's what human beings do. But at the same time, I can't deny this woman's experiences. I can't deny what she's been through. If she, if she came over here and found that we were hostile, snobbish, disrespectful, then I can't, I can't help the black Bretons who, who, who fucking disrespected her. I can't help them with that. Because at the end of the day, what are you even disrespecting her for? Most of our vernacular, the vernacular that we use in everyday life is African-American vernacular. You got, you got people from the fucking ends of Peckham and fucking, and fucking Harsden talking about feds. We don't, got, we don't have no fucking feds over here. We don't have fucking feds over here. We call the police feds over here. The police are not even the equivalent of the FBI over here. We used to have the equivalent of the FBI over here, but that's now defunct. Over here we have MI5, MI6, we have GCHQ, we ain't got no fucking feds. The only reason why we call people feds over here is because of African-American vernacular. Let's be real, African-American vernacular. What's up, girl? How you, what are you saying, girl? What's up, girl? African-American vernacular. Oh, so you're mad, mad. African-American vernacular. Cool. African-American vernacular. I got you. African-American vernacular. Most of the shit that comes out of our mouths is African-American vernacular. The, the music that I grew up with, like reggae music, like a, a, what a lot of people don't know about Jamaicans is that we listen to literally everything. So we've got Calypso over there in Jamaica. We've got, we've got other musical genres of our own in Jamaica, but we've also listened to a lot of other types of music, especially from America. If you listen to reggae music, there is a lot of influences from soul music, from R&B music. We in turn picked that up in our culture. When we came over here, we picked that up in our culture, ran with it. And then don't even get me started on the white bands from Britain who went over to fucking the US, stole blues and came back with it. We have Northern soul because of black American culture. Everything that we have, the words that we use, the music that we listen to, the, even the way that we stand to the way that we sing. African Americans or black Americans have left their mark all over the world. So the fact that anybody could meet a black American woman and be disrespectful towards her, knowing what black Americans have brought to the world. Like after everything was ripped away from them, their history, their culture, everything, they created a new one from scraps and the world still copying them. And you want, you want to fucking disrespect a black American woman as soon as she comes over here and really in your infinite wisdom, think that you're better than her? What the fuck are you doing? I don't fuck with that. I don't fuck with that. So whilst I don't fuck with oh, I can't stand black British people. I don't fuck with that because it's immature as shit. At the same time, what is anybody doing looking down at this woman for being black American? Like, what, what the fuck are you doing? If you're looking, black, looking down on black Americans, stop listening to black American music. Stop using African American vernacular. Cut that shit out altogether. And don't use it again. I don't care if you think it's fun. Don't use it again. Because if you can't have the respect for their culture, you can't have the respect for the people. Don't use their fucking culture on some real shit. So if that black American woman came to, came to our shores and got that treatment from us, that's a problem. That's a real fucking problem. But at the same time, where black Americans are being xenophobic, I've got to call, you, call your shit out too. I've got to call your shit out too. Poor little Brit Brit. Let me give you some fucking knowledge. Yeah? When it comes to your struggle in the US with civil rights, the whole world knows what you've been through and knows about the rights that you still struggle 
to, to, to get. You're still struggling for your human rights now, but the whole world knows about it. How many other how, how many other countries where black people have suffered injustice at the hands of the police do you know about? Have you taken the time to research about? How many how many people have died in police custody in Britain that you know about? How many, how many black people that have died in Europe from institutional racism do you know about? What about the injustices in black country, injustices in Africa that black people have got black people are going through right now? How many of their names do you actually know while you're sitting here talking about how the rest of the world don't respect you? You're the first word in our mouths and you're the, you're the first word in our mouths when we come up, get up in the morning and the last word in our mouths when we get when we lay our heads to sleep at night. And yet you're walking around here thinking that this world somehow. Like somehow that doesn't acknowledge you or doesn't like. You want to call out the black British people for being xenophobic and for stealing from you and for being colonialism with literally, literally. Every single black person across the diaspora, even Africa, has a history with colonialism and that displays in different types of xenophobia. And yet black British people are the ones who are like, come on, man, I can't stand that shit. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You really want to come after black British people in particular over a handful being rude to you and you haven't met the whole spectrum of black British people. That's why I'm like, no, I don't call black Americans out of their name because I don't know them all. I'm not doing that. So when I talked about how black Americans depict us as being, you know, underhand and, and you know, all the rest of it, when I, when I talk about how black Americans depict us as weak or, you know, presumptuous or trying to act like we know your culture better than we do or being sellouts, that fucking pisses me off. And I have the right to say, you know what? You're not going to do down black Britons like that. I'm not having it. I have the right to say that not only as a black British person, but as a black British person who has been surrounded by black British people that are not only proud of their own blackness and their own culture, but celebrate American culture on the daily. That's not what we're going to do. So whilst I don't want to invalidate this woman and her experiences, and I am truly sorry that she's been subjected to that. I'm not about to tolerate anybody dissing black Britons based on what? Based on Tandy Newton. Come on, man. Tandy Newton. Based on Tandy Newton, who, who doesn't have the same grip and reality as the rest of us anyway. Are you, are you What, you're talking about her? The same one who wants to talk about how she never experienced colorism before she went to America and yet somehow missed all the colorism and all the texturism from this country. You're basing all black British people based on that. Good luck to you. Good fucking luck to you. I, that's why I don't fuck. That's why I don't fuck with that xenophobic shit. I don't. As for me. For the longest time, I felt like I was born in the wrong body. I didn't think there was anything wrong with being black. I just thought there was something wrong with me. I felt like I was born in the wrong body. I wasn't black enough. I looked black. My skin is, my skin is brown. I look like a black person. But I didn't feel like I had enough rhythm to call myself black or I had enough spice to call myself black, had enough... You know, so, we, you know, but it turned, as it turns out, what I thought was a lack of blackness was actually a learning difficulty, which was exacerbated by other people with undiagnosed learning difficulties. But, okay, not a learning difficulty, but undiagnosed autism. So, like, what I thought was a cultural problem was actually a medical one, but that's for another time. But for the longest time, I thought I was in the wrong body. I thought my body didn't belong to me. And the black British people that I surrounded by were full of culture and life and flavor that I was jealous of, that I was envious of, that I felt like I didn't have inside myself. But that's my story. Like, 
that's what bothers me. It's like everybody is trying to make out like all black black British people are basically like me. Who have felt like they were in the wrong body, but that's not the experience of the majority of black Britons. The majority of black Britons do not operate that way. But then again, when you're dealing in, you know, the, sometimes the higher up the ladder you go, the more you have to deal with xenophobia, the more you have to deal with racism, the more you have to deal with sexism. It doesn't end when you climb up the ladder. You kind of have to bypass it in order to get up the ladder. The, you know, the higher you climb, the steeper it gets. So again, this woman's in a professional environment. I'm not so I wouldn't be surprised if black Americans would face more xenophobia. Like, you know, at, at, on, in more professional circles than they would in my circles. Because in my circles, no xenophobia. No xenophobia over here towards black Americans. None. So I can't invalidate this woman's experiences. I can't, I can't invalidate her experiences. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of black Americans are just short-sighted when it comes to us. But then again, I don't even think that's a black American problem. I think that's a fucking human problem. On some real shit. That's a human problem. Nothing to do with blackness. Nothing to do with Americanness. Nothing to do with nothing like that. That's a fucking human problem. That's a fucking human problem. Let's be real about the shit. It's it like... I mean... Yeah. It's not like, no, yeah, not all black people are like me. But then again, I'm neurodivergent and I didn't know I was neurodivergent. And I thought it was a racial issue rather than a neurodivergent issue. But OK, that's for another time. But no, nah, it's not cool. It's not cool. I don't care how frustrated you are. It's not cool. It's not cool. We all get frustrated. We all want to be accepted. Because it's a human right to be accepted. It's a basic human right for people to accept one another. So if you're coming over here and you're getting shit just for being American, I get it. But to say that people are white supremacists for like disagreeing with you or like not even disagreeing with you, for defending themselves and their culture, to say somebody is white supremacist for defending themselves and their culture... It's disingenuous as fuck. It's disingenuous as fuck. I should not have come across as if I was invalidating. You know, I felt like I was invalidating somebody's experiences and it, that is not my intention. But saying white supremacy is like, that's, that's bullshit. I'm sorry. That's bullshit. Bullshit. A-A-V-E. Bullshit. Uh, actually, no, I don't know if it's A-A-V-E, but it's definitely American. Bullshit. Oh. So, yeah, that's what I have to say about Tandy Newton and the whole wider situation. I, I really feel that we kind of over identify ourselves with this sometimes. I really do. And I really feel like it causes a lot of problems. I spent so long hating myself for being not being black enough that I lost my self respect a lot of times. Because I over-identified with my race rather than realising, you know what, you have undiagnosed autism, uh, you have severe trauma from a lifetime of abuse on top of that. And yes, there is a legacy of slavery that's responsible for that, but it's also an individual issue that has no bearing on you or your culture. I'm just... Yeah, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking when we do this to each other. It's truly heartbreaking. But we all have a lot of growing up to do. We cannot keep over-identifying with this. 
don't get me wrong i've accepted being black i lo actually love this skin i can't i can't lie to you i do love being black now i never used to but i love it now i do but it's just i love being a black woman i love all that it brings i love all that it teaches me i do love it but it's one thing to love being a black woman or love having brown skin or love having a woman's body or love having a woman's brain it's one thing to love that and it's another thing entirely to just base your entire being and your entire ethics around that when really it's as simple as do unto others as you would have them do unto you we over identify with our culture and then you know and then we you know we try to hide our malaise behind it when really it's as simple as just treat other people the way you want to be treated and if you're navigating a racist corrupt world that is colorist and texturist on top of that well <coughs> you've got a couple of decisions to make either you're going to progress up the ladder knowing that this shit is not going to change. Sorry, there's a lot of noise outside. Either you're going to progress up the ladder, knowing that this shit is probably never going to change, or you're going to step away, choose solidarity with the people that you talk about, and just live your life that way. Try to find another way to make a living. Those are your two options. But crying about it and, and, you know, and trying to open up a dialogue that is literally futile because, again, the higher up you go, the more elitist it gets. Trying to have a conversation about that is just, what, what are you crying about it for? Like, um, why are you doing it publicly? You don't need to do that. Like, seriously, you don't need to do that. Do your thing. The problem is not you. The problem with Tandy Newton, the problem was not you. The problem was never you. Just do your fucking job. Like, just do your job. Do your job. Like, you like, like, either take the role or don't. Take the roles or don't. And keep, you'll keep your self-loathing to yourself because the thing is sometimes... When you hear somebody who doesn't like themselves or who doesn't like what they do and they basically go around telling everybody that they don't like themselves and what they do, it's self-indulgent. Take the role or don't, seriously. You know, you know, make a stand or don't. You can't just talk. You've got to do something. So anyway, that's my... That's my piece. I think I, I think I was jumbling. I think I was all over the place with this video. But yeah, Real Justice to Row, Fabian Deacon Vocals. I'm going to leave the links next to this video. You guys take care. I love you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.